awaken, awaken. That's the, what we hear about in the Course is, coming, is, is a waking dream. In other words, instead of continuing to dream and staying stuck in the dreaming, you forgive and you have a happy dream before you wake up to eternity. Doesn't that make intuitive sense? Why would we go from nightmares into bliss? It would be kind of shocking actually to go from nightmares into bliss. You probably have heard the analogy of, of a mother waking a sleeping child or attempting to wake somebody. But if the child is dreaming and is dreaming a nightmare and the mother shakes the child on the shoulder, chances are if the child is having a nightmare, the child will just interpret the shaking on the shoulder as, as fearful, as part of the dream. And it won't be part of the wake-up mechanism, it'll be just be interpreted as just another part of the dream. So, A Course in Miracles is just giving us a beautiful way towards a path of complete non-judgment. And in that non-judgment, that's a state of acceptance and wholeness, which is what the happy dream or the waking up from this world is all about. And we're given it, you could say, step by step, because the mind that believes in this world believes in linear time, and it believes in, in separation, it believes in fragments, it believes in, in parts and segments. So, it seems like the plan of awakening, as you're going through it, involves phases and segments. In reality, it's really just like an instant, but it's like it has to take the form of segments, because it would be too frightening if it was just forced on you, you know, if, if the Spirit said, okay, come on, we're gonna, we're gonna flash out, <laughs> and you were invested in illusions. You know, like I use the analogy a lot of times, like going to a movie theater. If you, if your eyes adapt and adjust to the dark movie theater, it's not really wise to go right out the door in the back on a bright sunny day, because it will hurt, your eyes will hurt, because they, they can't stand the light when they've so adapted to the darkness. And that's why the Spirit has to do it in segments, so that it's more of like a time collapse is what it's called, so that you have more of a, he calls it more of a beatific experience with awakening instead of a traumatic. You know, the Spirit is not about trauma. It's not about shock value, it's more about retranslation. And so in one sense, that's why, why we have our like movie watcher's guide to enlightenment, waking up with the movies. Enjoy the popcorn, enjoy the movies, enjoy the movie segments, enjoy the interactions with your brothers and sisters, enjoy your prayer time, enjoy your meditations. You know, it's like getting something that you can relate to. And that's a characteristic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will use the things that you believe in and use the things that, that are even ego values. The Holy Spirit will use what the ego made. The ego made the world in hate. But the Holy Spirit is using the symbols that the ego made as part of the retranslation of turning it around and showing a forgiven world or a happy dream. So that's why it's so important to follow your heart. You know, if I, I know in my case I've used those examples over and over, but you know, I was uh, not into yoga. I was not into Tai Chi. I was not into uh, a lot of different techniques that people use. I enjoyed sports, so uh, the Holy Spirit just used my, my enjoyment of golf and tennis. So those were my mind training, my open-eyed meditations. Uh, I used the golf and the tennis with the Holy Spirit to train the mind, because there were things that I enjoyed. And that's how the Holy Spirit works. If you enjoy music, if you enjoy movies. I know uh, my friend Gary Renard, he, he loves movies. We love to sit around when we get together and talk about the latest movies and metaphysical movies, because it's something that's enjoyable, and the Spirit will use what you enjoy to take you deeper and deeper into that release point. So, it's very different from the kind of thinking that, oh well, I'm just going to have to change my whole life and my whole lifestyle. It's more likely that the Spirit will use a lot of the 
elements and the things that you believe in in the retranslation so you don't have to like reinvent the wheel. You don't have to oh, learn a bunch of new stuff. Isn't it great that it's about unlearning? And, you know, I was in university for 10 years, it's like, it's enough. You go reverse, you start to absolutely unlearn and more and more you, you start to realize that you're safe, that you're, you're not going to be in jeopardy through this reverse amnesia process. <laughs> you know, we've had an amnesia with God, so we're just reversing the field, we're reversing our minds and coming back to that. So, I think that little 50 minute uh, Star Trek episode has a lot of components of what we're talking about with the Course in Miracles, with the artificial environment, with, with learning to withdraw the investment in, in the thoughts and the belief system that keep the artificial environment in place. And once you start to do that, you start to free your mind of that. It still looks like you're having a, having a lot of fun. I mean, I feel like I have a lot of fun every day, and so it's not like, you know, this kind of big sacrificial life lifestyle where you think, whoa, oh gosh, what have I got to give up? You know, I gave up this for Lent, and now, you know, asking another of me, and another, it, as if it's a, it's a path of relinquishment, a path of renunciation, and so forth. Um, you know, we, the Course would, would say that, that the journey to authentic spiritual awakening is not a path of asceticism, so it's not like you, you try to go and deprive yourself of things, it's more like you get into your miracle working capability and you let the Holy Spirit use the symbols that are part of your world as it's been constructed in very helpful ways, in communicative ways. So you use the body to express happiness and joy, you know, and express the, the peace and extend these things and then through the use of the body and the use of the symbols of the world by the Holy Spirit, then you become detached from them. It's like the Spirit uses them in ways that frees your mind from them. So you don't have any personal investment in these things because the mask or the persona is getting, getting washed away. So when you really follow it, it just starts to make more and more sense. Awaken, oh.